Dr. Laverne Jackson founded Missionary Education and Evangelistic Training, M-E-E-T, ministry, a multifaceted Christian charitable faith-based ministry. It includes a lifestyle center, gospel medical missionary training school, publishing ministry including canvassing, a natural farm, and, er and the herbal industry. They conduct seminars all over the world covering all seven continents. Meet seeks to answer the Minnesotian cry, Acts 16, 9 through 12, which is currently heard from every quarter of the globe. Their purpose is threefold, a trained, skilled, and consecrated gospel health ministries to establish missionary centers worldwide and to declare the last message of warning to a dying world. They, they do this focus, they do this through focus on four specific areas, training, health, evangelism, and herbal and publishing industry. Brother Jackson, thank you so much. I like being in the center here. Is the mic on? Good. Um, that must have been a uh, archaic description. It's been 40 years that I've been into the work. 28, that's probably about 12 years ago that was written, huh? My wife and I have been in this work for 40, 40 years. 40 years has been a wonderful experience. So we're going to move right into our presentation because we're squeezed for time. So if you can deal with me or bow your heads, let us have a word of prayer. Loving Father in heaven, we come once again as we've heard your words spoken to our hearts the last evening, this morning. Now we ask once again that you download unto us what you have your people to hear, to understand, and to make the right application that it be sustainable. That it will not just be information dispensers, but we will indeed have an intimate relationship with you that the words of life may be made flesh in our lives and others might see the good works and glorify you. Now take this stammering tongue when you speak. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's take your medical books and open them up. The greatest medical book that has ever been written. What do you think about that? The Word of God. Thy saving health and um, we want to see the core relationship between thy saving health. As we go to the screen here, who shall receive the seal of God? In the context of the theme, we want to study this subject, thy saving health. If you turn with me to the simple verse, the book of Psalms, chapter 67, and I'd like to read a few verses as we look at that particular section. What did I say? We're going to pick up verse 2. Verse 2 in Psalm 67. The Bible reads, I hear pages. Are you there with me? All right. The Word of God says, let's read that particular verse together. What does it say? That thy way, I don't hear you out there, that thy way may be what? Known upon thy what? Saving health among all nations. <clears throat> Verse 3, let me read it for you. It says, let the people praise thee, O God, that all the people praise thee. Verse 4, or let the children, or let the nations be glad. And do what? Sing for joy, for thou shalt what? Judge the people righteously. And what? And govern the nation upon earth. Selah. Then it goes on and said, let the what? Do what? O God, let all the people praise thee. And then it says, let's read verse 6 together. What does it say? And what? And God, even our own God, shall what? Bless us. It says here, what did it say? Let the earth what? Yield its increase. When we talk about the glory of God, 
filling this earth like the ocean fill the sea. It will give an increase when God's people have such an intimate relation with him that his righteousness will fill this earth. We will see this. As we move forward here, the angels, the Sabbath and medical missionary work. We don't have time to look at that text, but Isaiah chapter 58, verses 12 to 14, but it goes up to verse 1. We call that the divine prescription. How many of us study Isaiah 58? That is the medical missionary work combined with the gospel. Notice what it says here. Here's a quote, the book Evangelism, page 517. It says, upon those who keep the Sabbath of the Lord is laid the responsibility of doing a work of mercy and benevolence. It's very important to understand that, benevolence. It goes on and says, medical missionary work is to be bound up with the message and what? Seal with the seal of God. Medical mission at work, bind up with the central message, will produce the seal of God. I would just be amiss to say, and you could probably hold me to this, but that final church, the church triumphant, we're in the church militant. I will be very clear to say that every one of those who will make up the church triumphant, 144,000, will be gospel medical missionary. What do you think about that? I have to say two amens to that. So that means, church, you might as well start making up your mind now. I didn't say you have to work at Loma Linda, et cetera, et cetera, but you got to be a gospel medical missionary. Every church should be a training institute to train its members how to embrace the very method that God has given us. We will see this as we go on. Seal with the seal of God. And when we're talking about the seal, there's no way we're going to receive the seal of God if we're not following God's method. Would you say so? So one of the things, mechanically, we need to be gospel medical missionary, to receive the seal of God. What do you think about that? Amen. Amen. We see the truth for this time, the third angel message, is to be proclaimed with a loud voice, that with confidence, boldness, with clarity, as we approach the great final test. We've been hearing about that since we've been here, the great final test. Notice what it says. This test must come to the churches in connection with what? No preacher, no teacher can teach with clarity and certainty, the three angels' message apart from medical missionary work. Ooh, silent. It's all right. That message must go hand in hand. And by the way, the man or the woman must match the message. How many understand what I just said? The man or the woman must match the message. Did you get that? For out of the abundance of heart, the mouth speaketh. So we got to be the message. Christ was the word in the flesh, incarnate. So that message must become flesh in my life. Let's move on to the very substance here. I was sharing with someone, we have made <clears throat> Christianity very complicated. And I'll tell you why as we go down. So here we are, we got life in 3Ds. Life in 3Ds, I'm not talking about three dimensions, the movie, life in 3Ds. I simplify it. The first D is what? The second D is what? The third D is what? Life in 3Ds. Destination, direction, and what? We find here life in 3Ds. Let's read it together. What does it say? Our destination is reached by the direction we take based on the decision we make. Let's say that again. Our destination is reached by the direction we take based on the decision we make. Did you understand that? Now, this is a template, a template 
is a frame of reference, a foundation. This three dimension, three Ds, can be applied to any aspect of our lives. Destination, direction, decision. Now, we need to understand our destination in order to understand the path we're going to take and the choices we're going to make. Every decision you and I make is in light of the destination. Does anybody know what I'm saying? If you want to be a great singer, like when I was, before I became a Christian, my pursuit out of the inner cities of Chicago, working my way through high school, on to college, scholarship, etc., I wanted to be one of the greatest basketball players that ever came out of my era in 1960s. And I was on my way there, there. In my junior year, two institutions were drafting me. What did I say? Two institutions were drafting me. The NBA and the United States Army. It was during the Vietnam War. I was clinically diagnosed at the age of 17 with rheumatoid arthritis. What did I say? It lasted until I was 27 years of age. But make a long story short, during that time, anybody, any, any veterans in here? Any veterans? Any Vietnam veterans? Vietnam. And so I'm not anti or unpatriotic, but I sure didn't want to go to the Army. I wanted to be a great basketball player. And so they had a draft lottery. You know what a draft lottery? Between 100 and 300. My number was 53. My time was up. And there, Philadelphia was pulling at me, and Uncle Sam was pulling at me. And there I had old crippling arthritis. But I played exceptionally well with that pain. Make a long story short, Doc, the United States Army gave me the highest rejection that anybody could receive. I was a very proud person, but that did not hurt my pride. They gave me 4F. You heard of 4F? Unfit to clean the latrine. When I, when I went out of that place, I was skipping and jumping. I forgot I had arthritis. <laughs> then my career as a basketball player was short-lived, destitute. And so we find that when I was seeking that goal, my bride from my side, be 44 years in another couple of weeks, we met when we were 17. She was a lovely lady, but basketball was my passion. When I made the varsity team in high school, the coach said to us, he said, young man, you don't want to be a good basketball player. You want to be a great basketball player. And what you need to do is to eat, sleep, and drink basketball. Anybody ever heard of that? You got to eat, sleep, and drink? As a young man, you know, I, I just took him literally. When I went home that night, instead of putting on my pajamas, I put on my basketball uniform. I actually slept in my basketball uniform. I got up, going to the restroom, get ready for school, and my leg was in air. My mom said, boy, you stop in air when mom speak. She looked me up and down. She said, son, a rhetorical question. So she got on. She knew what I had on. So I looked up and said, my uniform, mother. She said, did you sleep in that? I said, yeah. Son, we don't sleep in basketball uniform. You have pajamas. I said, Mom, my coach said, if I'm going to be not a good basketball player, if I'm going to be a great basketball player, I got to eat, sleep, and drink basketball. That's what I told her. She said, well, son, i tell you what you do. No breakfast this morning. Take your basketball, if that's the case, and eat your basketball. I woke up. So the coach was telling me what? You must have a what? A passion that you set your goal high. You follow what I'm saying? I played in the snow. I played in the rain in Chicago when there was no rim. I got a peach basket, put it on a telephone pole, played in the alley. My wife want to go out on a movie? No, I'm playing basketball. I don't know how why she stayed long with me. I was possessed with that. You know what I'm saying? My destination was to be a great basketball player. The direction I took, I would not go out 
I would not smoke, I would not drink, because I knew that was going to interfere with me reaching my goal. Anybody listen to me? My direction, my path, the decision I made. When the guys want to come on and say, come on, go out. And I said, no. I'm, I'm shooting bass. I'm, I'm learning how to shoot. My decision was made in light of my destination. How many understand what I'm saying? My decision is predicated upon my destination. That is for a corruptible crown. For a corruptible crown. But when you are grafted into that vine, Jesus Christ, you'll find something. Three Ds. My destination, your destination, is heaven. And we find the direction I take, we're going to see God outline the path. We don't choose the path to get to heaven. Are you listening to me? Keep this in mind. Very important. The decision I make is predicated upon that destination. Destination, direction, decision. Hmm? Thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health of all, among all nations. Health and salvation. Is there an interrelationship between health and salvation? The Bible is perfectly clear. When we look at that word salvation, take the I O N, you have salve, means to heal. Salvation simply means to heal. God came to what? Heal us. That means to restore us. Very important to understand that. John 10.10, 10, you know that. It says that the devil, he's a thief, he's a robber, and he's a murderer. And Christ said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. The devil is seeking to steal your seal. He wants to steal. He's a robber. Christ came to give us life and life more abundantly. Turn with me to the book of Romans 12. Let's read it quickly. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Thy saving health may known among all nations. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. You there with me? Let's read it together. It's good to read it together. Let's read it together. What does it say? I what? I beseech you. I don't hear you. By the mercies of God that you present your bodies a dead sacrifice. Okay, I just want to know. Okay, living sacrifice. Go ahead. Let's read on. Holy, acceptable of God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And be not what? Conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may what? What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Dr. Palmer, children's story, which I was highly engaged. I was not up front, but I was there up front. I love the brain. I told him I need to steal his stuff, the brain. Anybody want to hear for that children's story? Fantastic. God said he wants us to pre present ourselves a living sacrifice. Then he said our minds need to be what? Transform. Did it what it said? Now, what's the purpose of having a transformed mind? In the scripture now, not your thoughts. What does it say? To prove what is what? Good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Without a renewed mind, we cannot prove what is the will of God. What do you think about that? We cannot do it. That's what the scripture says. Notice this. Goes on. Our bodies. This is nothing new to you. Our bodies are what? Keep that in mind. I'm going to move forward in this. We know this. God said, if anyone destroy what? Defile, rather, this temple, God will destroy him. We are the temple of God, just like the sanctuary. It's holy. Keep this in mind as we get through this whole situation. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1. The Bible says, but now thus says the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have what? Redeemed thee. I have called thee by name. Notice what he said. Thou art mine. Did you hear that? Patent. God put a patent on you. He said, Jackson, you are mine. You belong to me. 
by creation and redemption. What role does health play in the plan of salvation? In Psalms 102, verse 16, when can Christ come? Notice what it says. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. Did you hear that? When God build up Zion, we are, see, we are not waiting for Jesus to come. He's waiting for you and I. Time no longer after 1844. It's any day now. Time no longer. He can wind up the clock. He can speed up the process. Notice what it says, a very favorite quote. Most people, present truth, quote this all the time, come from Christ's object lesson. It's not the demise, it's very clear. Let's read this together, what does it say? When the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his, then he will to what? So what is Christ looking for, awaiting on in me? He's looking for a picture of himself in me. He's looking for a picture of himself in me, how I relate to my wife. What do you think about that? He's looking for a picture of me, how I relate to my children. He's looking for a picture of me, how I relate to my fellow workers in that ministry, in the church folks. No matter how much knowledge I have, and how powerful a preacher is, but if he does not reflect the very attributes of Christ, Christ will come. I knew you not, you workers of iniquity. That's a story in itself. As we come to a close, I tell you about that. In the book of Revelation, chapter 14, 1, John, and I looked and lo, a lamb stood on where? Mount Zion. And who was with him? And there are 144,000 having his father's character. But it says the father's where? Where? Name in where? Keep in mind as we move on. Father's name. That's the final church. Turn with, turn with me to Philippians chapter 3. Now, if you don't remember anything else, this is your destination. Now, as you turn there, how many of us really focus in on being saved? Man, I see one, two, and you don't have to raise your hand. Just, I just want to raise that question. How many of us, don't raise your hand, are truly focused on being saved? You don't raise your hand. Now, I want to propose something to you. Say that salvation is not my focus. What do you say to me? What's wrong with me? Because God came to save us, amen? But Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14, is going to tell us what our goal and destination. You got it there? Now, as you look at it, I'm just going to paraphrase. Paul said, I forget those things behind. That's verse 13. Now, verse 14, Paul says, I press. Do you hear that? I press towards the mark. Are you, is that what it's saying there? Of the high calling, where? In Christ. Please let this resonate with you as we move rapidly on. The high calling. Paul said, you remember? Destination. You remember? The mark. My destination, follow me now, is the high calling that's in Christ Jesus. Now, time will permit, you'll find the high calling is godliness, God-likeness. Do you hear what that is? The high calling is God-likeness. Did anybody understand what I just said? God-likeness. My high calling in Christ Jesus is God-likeness, to be like God in character. Can I do that in my own power? That verse tells us where the high calling is found. Where? In Christ. In John 15, 5, Christ said, I'm the vine. You are the branch. Without me, you can do nothing. 
what is the definition of nothing? Nothing. Are you with me, ladies and gentlemen? You cannot tie your shoes. You cannot breathe. Now, why are we still taking to God our plan to finish his work and asking God to endorse my plan? I did that for 40 years. I confused the gift with the fruits. I commended my gifts to God to be received into his kingdom to think I was going to be sealed with the seal of God. Anybody heard what I just said? That was my problem. I don't know about you. We'll see this in a moment. My, the high calling, your purpose according to the scripture, and my purpose does not say your calling, your gift. It says your purpose for existing on this earth is to reach that high calling, God likeness. And God will not lower the bar. The world didn't do it. God said, if you're going to be in the professional sport, we're not lowering the bar. Higher than the highest human thought is God's idea for you and I. God. That need to resonate with us. That need to resonate so much that we crave for that. That when I'm irritated and agitated, it doesn't hit me. It comes off my back like water off a duck back. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's the story itself. Godliness. It goes on. Two aspects to the plan of salvation. I want to speed up here. The first one is redeemed. You see that? The second one is restored. What's the two aspects? Redeem, restore. Two aspects. All right, let's define that. Redeem means to what? Come on, talk to me. It's all right to interact. It's to buy back. Christ came to what? Buy us back. Hello out there. Now let me ask you a question. Over the millions of people on planet earth have they been redeemed uh, no no this is this is a <clears throat> this is not an open end question this is a closed question no dissertation is a yes or no have every person on this planet human being have been redeemed hallelujah amen they've been redeemed have they been redeemed yes or no Come on, teacher. They've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen? Redeemed. Now we come back to restore, to return back to the original. Original what? The way Adam was before sin. Godliness. Have every soul on this planet been restored? No. Can they be restored? All right, keep that in mind now. You go to an antique, I'm not an antique person, but I'm just saying, you go to an antique shop, you see a, a piece of furniture that you really, it fit just perfect in the corner of your house that you can set your computer on. But it's all marred and scarred, chipped, but you see underneath there something of beauty. So you come out with your hard cash money and you redeem it. Hmm? You take it home. You say, man, I got a good deal. Even the person went down 50%. And you take that piece of furniture. It's like this little chair here. <clears throat> it's, but this is pretty. And you set it in your garage or your basement. Still in that condition. Every day you walk home, you say, man, I got a good deal. You have done one thing to restore it. Are you listening to me? You redeemed it, but you have not restored it. You get what I'm saying? Because now you got to go in there, you got <clears throat> you got to scrape all the paint, everything, get it down, sand it. You follow what I'm saying? And put a new coat on. That's being restored. God has redeemed us, but there's a restoration process. That's a restoration process. We find in Book Education, page 125, the redemption plan is to restore in the human soul the what? 
keep that in mind, the word image, to restore in the human soul the image of God. That is the central theme from Genesis to Revelation, to restore in the human soul the purpose of God. Genesis 126, you know the story. God said, let us make what? How? How? In our image, in our likeness, image. Keep that word image. Let's turn here. Turn to Isaiah 43, 7. Let's see what it says here. Let's move on. The central theme of the redemption plan is what? To restore in the soul of man the what? The image of God. Keep that in mind. Who shall receive the seal of God? Isaiah 43, 7. Notice what the words say. Hmm? Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for what? My glory. I have formed him, yea, I have what? Made him. God made us, I'm smiling. God made us for his glory. The reason I'm smiling, because <laughs> that's my timekeeper there. I think what I need to do, <laughs> no way. What I'm going to do, I'm going to have to stop here, okay? Because I only got five minutes, and because. It would do injustice to my folk here. All right? Because their time is short. So there's no sense of me going on. But if you don't remember anything else, remember that your high calling is in Christ. And we have not even get one third of the way. So let us have a, a word of prayer. Let us pray. Loving Father in heaven. We come to you in the precious name of Jesus. In light of, in spite of the time restraint, you can still take our minds and you can work upon them. You can help us to realize the high calling that you have placed upon us. And that is God-likeness. Though we might have not seen the connection between the mind and the body, I pray throughout the evening Others might be able to bring forth these thoughts because it's very relevant that we understand where the power is and how we should receive the seal of the living God. In the lovely name of Jesus, I pray and for his name's sake. Amen. Amen. Be blessed.